Hello and welcome to this guide on how to get back to Kerbin from the surface of Juna. So in this video we're going to launch our lander from the surface, we will rendezvous and dock with the command module in orbit and then we will return the command module back to Kerbin. So without further ado let's get the Kerbals back into the lander. So now we're here, the first thing we want to do before we even launch is we want to make sure that Duna and Kerbin are in the correct orientation. So we'll go onto the map, we'll zoom out and focus on Kerbal. And if you imagine this as a clock, we want to get Kerbin at around 3 o'clock and we want to get Duna at between 1 and 12 o'clock, so somewhere in that region there. So we're just going to warp forwards and once they are in position we will get straight into the launch. So that looks about right to me and it's always better to take your time and make sure that you don't overdo it because if you go too far then uh, it can be a bit of a pain to get back to the correct position and it's always best to stop a little bit early as well so we can just do a little warp forwards in the future if we need to. But anyway now they're in position we're going to go back to the map and we are going to, sorry back to the map, we're going to get our command module and our lander at roughly around 90 degrees from one another and personally I don't like launching in the dark either so we're just going to warp forwards until the lander is in the sunlight and we have the command module at 90 degrees so there we go now they're in position we are ready to launch so before launching we will retract the ladder and we will also retract the solar panels and finally we're going to do a quick save just to make sure that if something goes wrong we can go back to the launch. So for this launch we're going to go to full throttle, we will then press the up button on the control wheel while also retracting the landing legs. So full throttle, chat landing legs and up on the control wheel. And that just means now we're going to be locked to the top of the nav ball. And personally I also like to roll as well so that the red north line is to the left of the nav ball because we are going to be travelling east on this uh, launch and this is a, as much a matter of personal preference because I prefer to pitch down range using W rather than yawing or using S. So for this launch we're aiming to pitch at or start pitching at around 2500 metres and when we get there we're going to pitch down to the 45 degree line on the nav ball as well. So now we're at just above 100,000 metres, we have cut the throttle and uh, if you can, if you look you can see that because we are still in the atmosphere our apoapsis is currently dropping. Um, so if you are using a single piece lander and a command module then I would recommend going to well over 70,000 metres just to make sure that uh, your apoapsis doesn't drop back into, uh, into Juno's atmosphere and it shouldn't cause any issues. So. If we were to try and create our manoeuvre now, if you place the manoeuvre node on the apoapsis, you can actually see that because the apoapsis is moving, it would actually go past our manoeuvre. So we're just going to wait until we are above Duna's atmosphere, and once we're there, we'll be able to create the manoeuvre and circularise our lander. So now we're above the atmosphere. Uh, one little tip you can do is if you're struggling to get your manoeuvre centralised on the apoapsis, you can actually create it off to the side, and then if you drag the manoeuvre node, you can see there's a little dot in the middle. And if you line that up with the apoapsis, then it should be relatively easy to get an accurate burn. So now there, we're just going to circularise our orbit by pulling outwards on the retrograde arrow as usual. Pro prograde, sorry. 
and you can see it's saying that our apoapsis would be 109 and our periapsis would be 100. That would be 95. So we can, once they're uh, 90 degrees, we can pull outwards on the radial out arrow until the two line up to around about 99 or 100,000 meters. So 99 by 100 should do the trick. As I've said in the past, the manoeuvre planner isn't 100% accurate, so there's no point in faffing around with this too much. Although I personally like to get the projected orbit nice and circular. Anyway, now we are set, we can point at the manoeuvre marker on the nav ball. And once there, we can walk to the manoeuvre and perform the burn. Now as you can see the burn gauge isn't appearing at the moment for some reason so what we're actually going to do is we are going to watch our orbital info panel and once the two have lined up then we will cut the throttle and it might just be worth once they start to get close to one another just managing the throttle to try and make sure that we don't overdo it. So now we are in our initial parking orbit we'll delete that manoeuvre. And now we are going to just circularise our orbit by creating another manoeuvre on the apoapsis as usual and creating our manoeuvre. So we'll move that across. And once this is done we can walk to the manoeuvre as usual and perform the burn. So now our orbit is circularized, we will right click on the target ship and set that as the target. And you can see that our relative inclination is at 0 0.9 degrees. So to flatten that out, we will place a maneuver node on the next node in our orbit. Uh, in this case, it's the descending node. And as I've said in the past, I, um, if you are approaching the ascending node, then you would pull outwards on the anti-normal arrow or inwards on the normal arrow, so anti-normal normal uh, but because we are approaching the descending node we're actually going to pull inwards on the anti-normal arrow just to get a bit more fine control and make sure that we hit zero degrees and for this burn because we have no burn gauge and the orbital info panel would be pretty much useless we are going to keep an eye on the blue orbit line and once that's lined up with the orange projected orbit, we will be in our correct inclination. So now the two lines have lined up, we can see we are in our, our perfect zero degree relative inclination. So the only other thing to do now is to rendezvous. And as usual, when you're trying to do any kind of rendezvous manoeuvre, you want to try and get the two target ships at somewhere in between 90 degrees and 45 degrees. So we'll walk forwards until the two are a bit closer together. And now they are there, we can create a manoeuvre anywhere on our orbit. And pulling inwards on the retrograde arrow, we will wait until the orbits line up. And now we'll just pull the manoeuvre node around until the two yellow markers line up. Although the two orange markers would be good. But we're going to go for the first point of um, intercept at the moment. And that's giving us a 1.4 kilometre distance. And I usually like to aim somewhere in the region of a, a kilometre apart. Just because then when warping towards the target it makes it a little bit easier. And you won't have to constantly keep stopping and adjusting your... Uh, target markers on the nav ball. So anyway, now that's there, we will, as usual, point out the manoeuvre and perform this burn as well. So what we're going to do on this burn is, once we have started, we're actually going to delete the manoeuvre node and we're just going to watch our blue orbit until it lines up with the target ship's orbit. And once there, these yellow markers will appear and we'll be able to stop the burn and then adjust it with RCS to get nice and close. So 
So now it's saying our distance from the target would be 417 meters, which is pretty good. We don't want to go too close because if we do, then there's a risk we might end up, if we over warp, we might end up crashing into the target ship. So anyway, now that is set, we will warp to a point ahead of our intercept ma uh, markers. And once there, we will go to the map and look around to try and find the target ship. So there it is, we're currently 11.7 kilometers. So before we warp forwards to get any closer, we're going to make sure the velocity bug is set to target. We will also point our lander at the retrograde marker on the SAS control wheel. And now that's set, we can walk forwards till we're around about a kilometre apart. So now we are under a kilometre. We will now perform a retrograde burn to get our target speed down to zero metres per second. At once close, we'll cut the throttle and just use RCS to go the rest of the way. And now we are at zero meters per second relative velocity. We'll point at the target. And once there, we'll use RCS to boost forwards at around about 2.5 meters per second. And for this, as with any uh, rendezvous and docking maneuver, we want to make sure that the green prograde marker is lined up inside of the target marker on the nav ball. And that way we just know that we are heading straight towards the target and we won't end up spinning around it like crazy. So now we're under 150 metres, we'll make sure the markers on the nav ball are lined up. And we're just going to aim to get down beneath 50 meters and then once there we're going to stop our approach by using n on the keyboards to boost back so now we're under 50 meters we'll boost back while keeping the prograde marker inside of the target marker and once we hit zero meters per second we are now traveling in perfect uh, formation with the command module now, as you can see, the command module is currently facing away from the lander. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch to the command module. And then we are going to target the docking port on the lander. So where is it? Ah, there it is. So now we are... Uh, now we can see the lander what you can do is you can either right click on the docking port however sometimes it can be quite difficult to actually target that so what i would recommend in that case is just right click in on any point of the target ship go to the coupling section in the parts manager and just set the clampertron as the target and that's just a nice easy way to get to the target if you are struggling to highlight the docking port so now there we're going to point at the target And then once the two have lined up, we're actually going to use the command module to uh, do the final approach. So we'll make sure the velocity bug is set to target. We will activate the RCS and we will boost forwards at around about 0 0.2 meters per second. So as you can see, for some reason, the docking ports aren't actually uh, locking together at the moment, and I'm not exactly sure why. However, what we'll do is um, we will do a manual EVA transfer on this. So to do that, how I would ordinarily do it is I would line the door of the command module up with the door of the lander. So we'll roll the command module until the doors are lined up. And we will stop our approach just so that we are nice and stable. We're not going to end up bouncing off each other again. And then if we go back to the lander, we can now use the EVA button on our portraits and leave the, leave the lander. And if we let go and press R on our keyboards, we will now activate the jetpacks. And we're just going to carefully tap the controls so that we can slowly float down towards our 
command module, it's always best to take your time, as, a, as with everything in space, and just tap the controls very lightly and float down as opposed to trying to rush it. And once we are close enough, we can press F to grab and then B to board. And we'll do the exact same thing with Valve. Anyway, so now they are boarded, uh, what I'm just going to quickly do is I'm going to go back to the lander and turn SAS off and then we could, because um, there is an antenna on this, we could deorbit it, but I'm going to leave this in orbit as a kind of satellite. So now we are ready to create our transfer manoeuvre. So if we quick save and then go to the map. We can now zoom out and we want to focus, uh, so we want to set Kerbin as our target. So we will focus on the area. We'll zoom in, right click on Kerbin and set that as the target. And then if we go back to our ship, we want to be creating our maneuver node somewhere at around about 90 degrees from the orbit line because we are actually going to be burning retrograde to Juno's orbit. Uh, if we were going to an outer planet, we would burn prograde, but because we're burning to, or we're going to an inner planet, we're gonna burn retrograde. So we'll create the maneuver. And if we now zoom back out again, and focus on Kerbal to get a good idea of the overview of the solar system, we can now just pull a pro prograde burn out until our orbit intersects with Kerbins. And when it gets close enough, we should get to the intercept markers. Oh, and we are straight into an uh, encounter with Kerbin, and that was a pure fluke. Um, that makes me very happy, does that? Anyway, so if we go back to Kerbin, well, basically, when we are doing that maneuver, it can be extremely fiddly. So I was expecting to have to uh, take a few minutes just setting that up. But anyway, we do have an instant encounter, which is brilliant. So we'll just play around with the hours a little bit to see if we can get it a little bit closer. However, as with um, when we were going to Juno, there's no point in really messing around with this too much because we are going to do a mid-course correction. And as, and as you can see, we are only ever so slightly encountering Kerbin. So we're just going to leave it at that. We're going to do a quick save and we are going to perform this burn and as when going to Duna we'll focus on Kerbal and instead of watching the um, orbital info panel or the burn timer we are going to manage the throttle so that we don't end up accidentally skipping through Kerbin's atmosphere so we'll warp forwards and we will perform this maneuver There we are. Now that our entering SOI marker has appeared, we will cut the throttle and delete our manoeuvre marker, or manoeuvre node, and then we will focus back on Kerbin and see how our intercept is doing. So let, we could manage the throttle a little bit just to see if we can get much closer. However, as I say, there's not much point in messing around too much now because we are going to do a mid-course correction burn. So we'll do another quick save just to make sure that we don't have to do that again. And now we are going to find a point halfway between Duna and our entering SOI. And because the lines are so close together, we're gonna to have to try and establish which one is the one we want to go to. So we can click on the line and manual and time warp to point. However, if the lines are close together like that, I would recommend just manually warping forwards. And then once the ship gets about halfway, we can stop the warp and do the mid-course correction. So now we're about halfway, we'll make sure we are focused on our ship and we will zoom in and create a maneuver node just ahead of us and we are going to place this to around about four minutes from the start time. So we can judge that by the start burn timer on the burn gauge. And then if we go back to Kerbin and focus on that, we can now create our mid-course correction 
and try and get nice and close to Kerbin's atmosphere. We don't have to get exactly inside Kerbin's atmosphere just yet because we are going to do another minor correction burn after we've entered into Kerbin's sphere of influence. So we'll just move the arrows around until we get nice and close. And it doesn't have to be perfectly flat, but I like to have a nice equatorial entry just because I'm like that. So anyway, once we are nice and close, we will perform the burn and then enter into Kerbin's SOI. So now we're nice and close. We're going to perform the burn, and instead of using the burn timer or the, or the um, orbital info panel, we're going to watch the blue line. And once it gets close, we will then cut the throttle. So, as usual, we will point at the manoeuvre. We will do a quick save. Then we'll walk to the manoeuvre and perform this burn as well. And now the two lines are nice and close, we're just going to use RCS to go the rest of the way. There we are. So once that's done, we can now zoom out and we can find our entering SOI markers. And if we focus on Kerbal, just to make things a bit easier, we are going to manually warp until we enter into Kerbin's SOI. So there we are, we're now back into Kerbin's SOI, so if we focus back on our ship with home, we can see that our periapsis would be 322.9 kilometers. Now, if you haven't got much fuel left in your orbital tank, you would probably want to create a, um, well you want to make sure that your periapsis is well inside of Kerbin's uh, atmosphere, however, because we have quite a bit of fuel left in this tank we are actually going to do a deceleration burn so i'm going to start off by creating a maneuver plan just ahead of us and we're going to reduce our apoapsis or our periapsis sorry down to about well just over 70,000 meters so 73 should do the trick so now we are there we're once again going to point at the maneuver and perform this burn and with it being a two second burn, we'll use partial throttle for this one and wait until the two lines line up. There we go. So we can see our actual apoapsis or periapsis is 71,000 meters. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create another maneuver node just ahead of the periapsis and we're going to do a retrograde burn until we've run out of fuel and then if we check out how our periapsis is doing we're going to aim for somewhere in between 40 and 45,000 meters and that should just give us enough aero resistance to get back into Kerbin's uh, surface so now with that as usual we'll point at the maneuver and then we will warp to the maneuver as well And on particularly long warps, the timer will stop early, so just to get down to 30 seconds, you can hit the warp to maneuver button again. Then once the timer has emptied, we will go to full throttle and empty the tank. And now that the tank is empty, you can see our periapsis is actually at 39. So that's pretty good, is that? So, as usual, now that's done, we are going to point our ship either at normal or anti-normal. And once there, we will ditch the service module. And as I've said in the past, we always ditch the service module at an anti-normal or normal um, angle, just so that it doesn't end up... Uh, just basically so that we don't end up crashing into it when we are re-entering. So now that's set, we will point the command module retrograde. And the only other thing I would do before we enter it is I would make sure the uh, altimeter is set to ground just so that we get a good, a good idea of our distance if we're coming down on land. And then also stage the drogue parachute so that they will automatically open when we get to the correct pressure. 
So now we're going to warp forwards and it is pretty much just down to re-entry. So I apologise for all of the popping on the dialogue in this video. Um, it's very annoying to me and I hope it wasn't too annoying for you, but it's just something that seems to have been happening recently. But yeah, that's pretty much all there is to getting back to Kerbin from Duna. So if you enjoyed these videos and you want me to do any on another planet, just let me know and I will see what I can do about that. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed the uh, series and if you did, please feel free to like and subscribe and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.